Welcome to the Mindless Pursuits Unreal Engine Marketplace review of the Survival Props Pack by Polypixel. The date of this review is March 12, 2016, and as of this time, the currently supported official Unreal Engine builds of the product are 4.7 through 4.10, and the Unreal Engine build used in this review is 4.10.4. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of people who said, hey, you just did a Polypixel review uh, yesterday, but it just happened to turn up this way. I did an environment. I want to do a props pack next. I was looking at stuff I had picked that was older, and when I clicked on it, I had two survival packs, and I had this one, I had another one, and it just happened to be that I pulled up this one. So this is the one I'm going with. We'll get to the other survival pack, prop pack, down the road from someone else. Technical specifications, there are 40 prop assets. There are between 15, between 15, between 100 and 5,000 polygons for each with different levels of detail. Uh, you've got multiple textures, albedo, uh, compact RBG, almost there are 38 materials. The testing rig that you're going to see these on is my development box. You can see the specs here. The biggest thing for this is the quality of the textures and you know what everything looks like so my video card is an nvidia geforce gtx 980 ti that is uh, a hybrid water cooled system so here is the asset preview level that polypixel supplies now the camera moves very quick in this so if it gets a little jerky i apologize so there's actually a lot more than just this as you can see, if you look down that way, obviously this is not 40 assets, but they have them divided into categories. So this is survival, and we'll get in closer to some of these here so you can see. Uh, rocks, lighters, lanterns, flashlights, and as I'll show you in the comments on the Unreal Engine page for the product, they actually provide a link to an emissive texture that you can use for lighting. And uh, instructions on how to use it from Unreal. As you can. Of course, you've got the rolled up tent. You've got a health kit. Nice looking campfire. And you've got the tent. That's all in the survival category. And then they have a crafting category. So you've got feather and stack of metal, stack of wood, different cloths, paper. In here, so you can see the, the detail. Personally, I like the way everything looks. They, they say up front in their website that their textures are very high, and you might not need that for your games. Of course, I'm running on a very high-end system, and so I like that because I can see all sorts of fine detail. Here's our, whoops, here's our food category. But it's nice to have the option to scale these down and make them work. Now, my only complaint here is that egg, which you want to get in fairly close to it. Uh, still pretty polygonal, but it's not a huge deal. Um, I'd much rather have a slightly poly polygonal egg than one that's going to take up a lot of resources for no good reason. Let's get in close to these again. So you've got a canteen. Well-worn canteen. Nice pan here. Propane cylinder. Medicine bottle. Water bottle. I'm trying to figure out if that water bottle is transparent. At least in this demo it's not transparent. You've got a camp stove. And then for the final category, you've got melee and harvesting. So you've got knives and an iron pipe, hatchet, an axe, shovel, pickaxe. You've got a lure, and you've got a fishing rod, which to me was a nice inclusion because, uh, honestly, I didn't really think about it, but it's a nice thing for a survival game. So we'll get in here and look at some of these in detail. You can see the texture on the, the core candle and the line there. Now, 
I'm not certain what sort of blocking volume they've got set up in this particular section, but the objects themselves don't come with collisions. That's one of the things that they tell you. And the reasoning for that is pretty simple, and I understand it, which is people tend to change the collisions anyway to fit the, what's appropriate for their particular game. So it's just added work to strip off other people's collisions and add new ones on. Plus, there are some things where you probably want more than just a box texture, and there are some places where a box texture or a cylinder or something is going to be perfectly appropriate. So that's it. There's not really a lot to show in a prop pack. Everything looks good. Um, I'm very impressed with the quality. I like everything they did. If I had any complaints, it would be that there are no related animations for things. So, for instance, the lighter doesn't have an animation for opening and closing it. That's probably the only really big one. Uh, I would like it if they actually had labels that you could modify for the tin can, but that's not the end of the world, certainly. If you want that, you can always make a texture yourself that, that does that or modify their texture. And it might be nice if they had a version of the shovel that was actually folded. Uh, so you could fold it and unfold it the way it, it would work. It maybe does, maybe it's two pieces. Let's look at that quick. But we'll get out of here for now. So let's just go take a look at that. I think it's just one piece. Yeah, it's all just one piece. So that would be nice if that were two so you could actually fold that like you would a camp shovel. But again, that's not a big deal. So if you look at the structure of the folder, one, again, my thing is how organized is stuff, and like all the polypixel stuff I've seen, they're, they're very organized. You've got everything here. You've got your textures. You've got the scene, which is this level. You've got the individual models. Uh, you've got the materials for it. And you've got this icons folder that is full of wonderfully usable icons for everything up here that you can put in your game which is something that I didn't actually remember seeing in the description, but maybe it was there. But if it's not in the description, it's a really nice extra to have, because these are really quality icons, and I really like them. So, documentation. And for those who are wondering why documentation comes at the end of a review, it's very simple. I'm just following the workflow that most people do, which is that they tend to dive into the assets, try and use them, play with them, whatever, and if they run into a problem, then they go and look at the documentation. So, just following that workflow. And so here's the documentation. We'll take a look at their page on the Unreal site, and then we will look at their actual website support. So here is their page on the UnrealEngine.com marketplace site, and they've got the basic stuff there. And yeah, it doesn't say anything here about the icon, so I will consider those extras, and very nice extras to have. And of course, the answer comments, here is the link I was talking about where they talk about the emissive map to simulate turning the light on and off, and here is a tutorial on how to use it. They respond pretty quickly to incoming questions. So here's our support page that leads to the documentation. Now there's a little bit of a problem here in that if you actually go to this, under Unreal Engine 4, the Survival Proc Pack link, that is actually for their Unity Pack, and their Unreal Pack is down here. So, uh, hopefully someone will see this video and make a change there. So you click on it, and it's got all the different stuff in here related to it, the demo scene, models, asset theme, material setup, Uh, they talk briefly about the collisions, and you'll notice that, uh, you know, this actually contradicts the thing where I said they don't have collisions. They actually do have uh, collisions on their assets in the Unreal Engine. It's the Unity one where they don't. I happen to 
go to that documentation was looking at that before I realized it was Unity and so I apologize for that mistake. Um, here is their FAQ section for it and it talks about how to you know the FBX files can be modified and such which to me are a nice extra. Now having looked at the Unity version first I admit it set me up for a little bit of disappointment because if you go to the Unity version, which again is ironically under Unreal, in the Unity version they actually include some basic foliage. And I'm disappointed one because it just less stuff in here, but also because it would have been really nice in their demo level to have put their items in an environment like you might actually see in the game, so how things blend in with our environment, what they look like on the ground, uh, you know what the tent looks like in a in a area that has grass and all that, just some basic things to give a context. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a prop pack. There's no expectation that they should do that, but it would have been a really nice thing for the pack. So here are my ratings for the survival prop pack. The prop asset visual quality, I give a 9 out of 10. thought it was very, very well done. I'm actually taking a little bit off for the water bottle because the water bottle just wasn't transparent. You couldn't see any of the, the stove or anything through it, which I would expect with the water bottle, even a water bottle that had water in it. Um, there were no playable assets, so we're not going to include that. There's no playable asset ease of use because there were no playable assets. For the extras, I give them a 9 out of 10. I love that the icons are included there, but having seen the Unity documentation and the fact that Unity had the extra plants and stuff and Unreal doesn't, I feel I should knock off a point for that just for the difference. Documentation, uh, you know, for what it is, I like their documentation, but I'm actually going to give them a 5 out of 10 at the moment because of the fact that it's linked wrong on their site and therefore... If you don't notice it and you don't try going to the other link, you're not going to get the right documentation and you're going to think you've missed out and you're not going to get proper information about collisions and such. The package organization is excellent. It's uh, you know what I've come to expect in the last couple times I've worked with Polypixel stuff. Very well organized. The demonstration map, you know, it lays everything out there. It's 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 good for displaying the props, but I'm knocking off a couple points for the fact that I think it would have been very smart and very helpful to the consumer who's looking at the product and who may be using the product to be able to see it in some kind of outdoorsy or survival type environment. And I'm not saying be, you know, really elaborate with it, just some grass with some leaves or something, you know, some sticks, something that makes it look survivally so you can see the props in context. That's always my issue with props is if you can't see them in context, it's a little hard to figure out how well they're going to work for you. It's harder to, to imagine things sometimes. So with all that said, my final rating for the survival prop pack is 8.2 out of 10, which is still very good. It's not excellent, but it's very good. And it's certainly a score that I wouldn't be ashamed of if I were them. So, let me know what you think. So, for more information, if you want more information on Polypixel, you can go to their website. If you want more information on Mindless Pursuits, you can go to any of these links. If you like this review, please click the like button. If you would like to see more reviews as they come out, if you have an interest in game tutorials, uh, things like that, please consider subscribing and sharing this channel with your friends who might be interested in game development. And as always, I want to thank you for all of your interest and support. Take care.